Hi, I'm Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, and you're listening to the Patients Come First podcast. Greetings and welcome to the Patients Come First podcast from the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association. Joining us on this episode is Dr. Larry Istrail, a board-certified internal medicine physician at Anova Fairfax Hospital. Dr. Istrail has an interesting side job as the head of a homegrown coffee company. We'll have more on that in a minute, but first, welcome to the show, Dr. Istrail. Thanks. Great to be here. Well, we're happy to have you, and, and this is really an interesting subject, uh, so we appreciate you making a few moments to spare with us today. Of course, of course. In addition to being a trained physician, Dr. Istrail runs Fio Coffee, which is an internet-based company that aims to deliver fresh roasted coffee directly to customers in support of a noble mission, funding health care for disadvantaged people in struggling countries. Using its profits, the company has helped fund a dozen surgeries around the world in places like Malawi, Uganda, and Myanmar. If you would, Dr. Istrail, please tell our listeners a bit more about the origins of Fio and its products and the work it's doing to make the world a little bit better. Sure. So, uh, you know, it, it, the idea kind of started in when I was a resident at Inova Fairfax and I was uh, rounding on a patient with a, our endocrinology attending who had this condition called a pheochromocytoma, which is a very rare condition that um, basically causes your body to secrete too much adrenaline. Um, and it can cause all sorts of symptoms, but classically it can be high blood pressure, fast heart rate, tachycardia, and, and tremulousness, this jittery feeling that, and, and we had a patient with it, which is, which is really, in, was really interesting. And when I was leaving the room, I, I just thought to myself kind of silly that she, she looked like she had too many cups of coffee to drink. And that's really how the idea for the coffee company started initially kind of as a silly idea. And then I, I was just talking with my friends, medical friends about it, and they thought it was pretty funny and interesting. And I had a, a history in medical school of getting really interested in coffee and where it comes from and the roasting process and doing it myself at home. And so I thought back to that time and I tried again to... Um, order some unroasted coffee beans, which which look basically like popcorn kernels if you've never seen them, but they're green. And they're, they're literally the seeds that are dried out from certain plants, uh, you know, in other, usually in other countries, not in the U.S. And uh, someone years ago had this crazy idea to grind it and pour hot water over it and it created this delicious drink. So um, I initially was ordering unroasted coffee beans and with the plan of roasting them in my apartment uh, this was when I was a resident um, and uh, on an iron skillet and then I would ship it out to customers and use a portion of the proceeds to directly fund health care so that's really how the idea started um, I experimented about a hundred different times uh, roasting the coffee because you know, coffee traditionally is roasted in a large vat with uh, temperature control and a lot of precision. Um, and I was doing it in an iron skillet on a stove initially, which which has none of those things. Um, so I was trying all sorts of different ways to improve my quality control, but it just wasn't working. Um, some batches would be delicious. Some batches would taste like water. So I realized that it was not sustainable and... I needed to outsource uh, the roasting process, so after a bit of a search, I found a roaster in Winchester, Winchester, Virginia, who was willing to work with me, um, and so that's how I'm able to now roast coffee professionally and make it really delicious. Well, that is an interesting backstory, and it, and it sounds mm -hmm. like it truly is a homegrown business for you that started in, in your kitchen with a, with a skillet, as you said. Um, that's you, right. I know that you've got several different varieties of, of coffee with Fio that are named mm -hmm. for trailblazers in medicine and science, uh, and okay. that each each delivery to a customer actually comes with a story uh, about a person in another country that's been helped. Uh, if you would, could you just talk briefly about um, some of the patients that have been able to benefit and the type of uh, care that they've received as a result of uh, proceeds from Fio Coffee? Sure. Yeah. So I really wanted to um, make this um, a very one-to-one -one donation process, and what I mean by that is, when you buy coffee, you are, you see a direct uh, effect of your coffee purchase, where you'll get a card of a person from another country that 
Your coffee literally helped fund their surgery. Um, and you have the data, the, the that Fio Coffee donated the money, et cetera. Um, and so there's been actually 13 surgeries now, but uh, one anywhere from uh, mass removals to uh, one girl had a tetralogy of the low repaired um, one person had a an ear infect recurrent ear infection that needed surgery. Uh, something as simple as a tooth extraction uh, for a tooth abscess. But what I realized is, you know, these surgeries are relatively inexpensive compared to the U.S. Uh, market. But some of these surgeries, I mean, are literally keeping these people out of jobs, out of school. Um, and uh, you know, two, three, four hundred dollar surgery while it sounds like not much to us, could be, you know, a week or month salary for some of these people, if not more. And so it's really, really debilitating and creates this microcosm of illness causing poverty, and it's just a recurring cycle. On the note of the coffees, I really tried to honor our different medical pioneers because there's just so many interesting stories out there that none of us know about, take for granted when we order a chest X-ray in two seconds on Epic. You know, how did it actually come about? It was just years and years of experimentation, a lot of times accidental discoveries, and it's just so interesting, and I thought people would really want to want to know that. Well, that really is, it's making a difference two ways, it sounds like. It's educating people in some small way about uh, advancements over time that have improved the human condition, and then also right. it's it's making a real-world difference in the lives of people, as you said, people who, because of these conditions, uh, may be prevented from work uh, or from you know supporting their family in another nation. So that's that's a really great story. I, I'll, I'll admit that I'm not a regular coffee drinker. I, I don't dislike mm-hmm. it. I just don't have it every morning. But when mm-hmm. I have a cup, it's with a healthy dose of cream and sugar. So mm-hmm. I'll ask you, as as someone who's more of an expert in the field than I, uh, how do you take your coffee and uh, what do you think is the best way uh, for a cup of coffee to be enjoyed? Well, I think, you know, the best way is however you like it best. I think... Uh, in general, um, a lot of coffee that people tend to drink, myself included, until I really got into this, you know, is a Keurig or or some sort of Dunkin' Donuts. No offense to them, um, it's just not uh, not a lot of time is taken. Uh, it's usually made in a drip coffee maker. The beans are usually not fresh, and all these things put together, I think, really do make an enormous difference in the taste. But I think most people are not used to having. A, a cup of coffee that was ground appropriately, that was made with either a French press or a pour over, that was roasted within the week. It's really there's actually a flavor inherent in the in the drink. It's not just like a warm caffeinated cup of water that people add cream and sugar to. So I think um, once people actually experience like what we try to do at Fio Coffee or or any other specialty roaster that really takes their time and effort to um, give you fresh product that's really uh, done right, um, I think you will, would tend to reduce your cream and sugar because you may not need it. I personally like to drink it either black or with a little bit of sugar. It just depends on the day and what type of coffee. There's been plenty of research that suggests a moderate diet of coffee actually has health benefits. Where, where do you stand or what are your thoughts on those conclusions? Mm-hmm. I tend to agree. I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but all the... Um, epidemiologic data that I've seen for the most part. I mean, caffeine, coffee is one of the most studied drugs. It's so widely consumed. It, for the most part, tends to be positive um, with all sorts of health benefits. Usually it's uh, dose dependent. So the more cups people report drinking in these epidemiologic studies, the, the less health outcomes they seem to have. Now, that's, you know, you need to take that with a grain of salt and say, well, maybe people who drink four cups of coffee a day are just more wealthy, healthier in general. But um, even in other cases, like I just wrote a piece on um, caffeine and arrhythmias, a really common misconception that, uh, for example, people with atrial fibrillation or, or arrhythmias, uh, drinking coffee is dangerous for them. Um, there's been a lot of studies, randomized clinical trials uh, by electrophysiologists, cardiologists for the past decade couple of decades, and even as recently as March of this year, there was a big uh, article published by some electrophysiologists that basically said that's not the case, and in fact, all the data suggests the opposite, that somehow multiple cups of coffee is somehow preventive of 
of arrhythmias, which is also really interesting. But so in general, you know, I, I tend to be very um, cautious with these medical association recommendations, but it does seem to be universal and, and pretty consistent. Well, that is good food or maybe drink for thought, as the case may be. We'll call this the shameless plug section of the podcast, Dr. Trail. If you would, sure. please tell people where online they can learn more about you and Theo Coffee, whether that's through a website or social media. Sure, yeah. So you can go to theocoffee.com, P-H-E-O, coffee.com. Um, we're also on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and, you know, you can order anything you'd like on our website from coffee to mugs. We also have all sorts of interesting boxes uh, that come. There is this uh, bright yellow box that say caffeine deficiency treatment enclosed on them. They're really, We really try to focus on gift, gifts for physicians, nurses, um, or just for yourselves. Um, and they come with anything from medical books to handwritten vintage letters with actual wax seals on them, or we just released a, a gift box that actually has a, a custom voice feature where you send a box and it will uh, record a memo and then the person opens the box, presses a button, and, and they can hear your voice. Um, so we, we're pretty excited about that. In general, I just think uh, really what I'm trying to do with Theo is to tap into the, the 400 million cups a day that are drank in the U.S. alone uh, to try to create a sustainable health care fund for, for people abroad. Um, it's just, I think it's a much cleaner solution. It's much more elegant that way than just asking people for money and then using it to donate. And, you know, if I can create a, co if we can create a coffee that's roasted the week you buy it, delivered to your door, uh, that with cooler packaging, reasonably priced, you just re really want to make a product that would ask, make you ask yourself, why wouldn't you buy this one instead of a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts? Well, it really is a worthwhile cause, and, and uh, I personally commend you on the work that you're doing, uh, both within Thank the four walls so of the hospital and outside for the broader world. We're going to close with two lighthearted questions. Uh, okay. The first is, who is your favorite TV doctor of all time and why? And, and I will give you this little asterisk. I know that you are a basketball fan, as I am, mm -hmm. uh, so an answer like Dr. J would be acceptable. <laughs> Here's Julius. Certainly, Dr. J is up there. I would also have to say, probably House. Even though he's kind of a jerk, the interesting part of him, his ability to really come up with a diagnosis out of nothing is always kind of a Sherlock Holmes-esque mentality, which is, is always fun to watch. And finally... We'll ask this question, which is one we pose to many of our guests, and it's one we borrow from a popular BBC program. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book and one album would you take with you? And we will spot you a copy of the Bible. So other than the Bible, what one book and one album would you want to bring with you to occupy yourself? Interesting question. One book, I'd probably have to say... Clearly something about coffee or entrepreneurship. Actually, I, I have an answer for you. It would be the Elon Musk autobiography. Um, I'm kind of a fan of his, and I just really love his work ethic and his, his ability to look into the future and try to create it. Um, so that's that. An album, I'd probably have to say something like The Beatles, uh, which, might, which would make my dad very proud that I'm saying that, because he's, he's obsessed with them. You can't go wrong with the Beatles, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, that is going to wrap things up for this episode. We thank you for joining us on the Patients Come First podcast. And we encourage all of our listeners to visit LarryIstrail.com online and FeoCoffee.com online to learn more about the great work that Dr. Istrail is doing to help improve the world in a tangible way. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's great. Great to be on. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Patients Come First podcast. You can find new episodes as they become available at www.vhha.com. You can also find episodes of the podcast on SoundCloud and on other popular podcast portals. We also encourage you to engage with us on social media, including Facebook and Twitter. If you'd like to send us comments, questions, or feedback for the podcast, you can do that through our Twitter account 
at VirginiaHHA using the hashtag PatientsComeFirst. Thanks. Thanks.